Insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens. This is episode 81 Getting to Know You, Part 3. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my intelligent and beautiful co-host, Madison Whalen. Hi, everyone. Yeah, we're on all the different camera angles. I started off with different camera angles today. Yep. So how are you doing today, sweetheart? I'm doing pretty well. Pretty well, considering... My first week of school. Yeah, how did that work out for you? You were all remote this week, right? Yep. Um, we really didn't do too much. It was sort of just an introduction to everything. Pretty sure next week is going to be the first full week because we only had four days of this week, so. Okay, so this was just sort of getting into the swing of things, making sure all the technical issues are worked out, and next week you can jump in and start learning, right? Yep. Confidence level high? Somewhat. Somewhat. I guess. Um, I guess if it was one to ten, ten being the most, one being the least, uh, I'd go somewhere around five, maybe six. Okay. That's not too bad. Yeah. Hopefully we should be able to get through everything. And uh, I, I think after a couple of weeks, you'll get right into the swing of things and you shouldn't have any problems. Yep. So this week we are talking uh, about getting to know you. We've done two of these in the past. Uh, I think we'll find some of the questions that we're going to go over today were questions that we've asked you in the past, but it was almost a year ago since we did the last one of these. So some of your answers might be different. So Mm -hmm. I want to keep doing these periodically just to sort of – You know, check in. We'll start adding some different questions to it, but we'll ask some old questions just to see how things have changed. Yep. Uh, This actually came from the inspiration for today's episode came from school this week, right? Why don't you tell us about that? Um, Yeah, so um, it came from yesterday, and my one... um, Yesterday was supposed to be like a do now for all my classes, so I had to cycle through my classes. And one of the things that my math teacher did was sort of a get to know you quiz, which was the do now that we were supposed to do. And it was questions like how, like, what are your favorite blank and, um. Do you have a favorite blank? (laughs) Really? <laughs> um, and what's your favorite subject? That kind of thing. Gotcha. So we took some of those questions. We uh, kind of threw them together with some other questions that we had from before. And I went out and dug up a bunch of other questions that we can ask you. So it should be a fun episode today. But before we get started, I did want to plug the show, uh, since that's at the beginning of the script here. Um, I would, we would very much like to have folks subscribe to our podcast. This way you'll get it Monday morning at eight when it first becomes available. You can get us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, and Amazon. Now all the major podcast outlets carry our podcast now. Um, if you are a Amazon Prime subscriber, uh, you get a free Twitch Prime subscription. And we would uh, encourage you to subscribe to us. If not, at the very least, follow us on Twitch. We stream six days a week at twitch.tv slash insights into things. You can reach out to us and give us your comments and feedback. Uh, You can email us at comments at insights into things.com. You can get us on Twitter, uh, DM us or uh, tweet to us at uh, tweet, tweet, tweet. 
at insights underscore things. You can get our high res videos on YouTube at youtube.com slash insights into things. You can get the audio versions of our podcast at podcast.insightsintoteens.com. You can also catch us on Facebook at facebook.com slash insights into things. Or you can get links to all of these and all of our social media at insightsintothings.com. And we'll be right back to start the show. For over seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Civ Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Star Forge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, guild lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. So today we are getting to know Maddie with a series of questions. Uh, it's a question and answer session today, but it's all about you. So I took the questions that we did have, and like I am want to do all the time, I broke them into categories. So we'll go down through the categories, and they're in no particular order. Uh, I just tried to split them up so that they were in you know fairly decent sized groups. Let's just start asking questions and getting some answers here, okay? All righty. All right. First question I have, what is your absolute favorite food? Okay, so I have a lot of different foods that I have um, a very good relationship with. I don't know, <laughs> that I like. I have a lot of foods that I really like. Um, and if I had to choose one... Uh, I'd say it would probably be either um, a cheeseburger or spaghetti. Okay, that's a good answer. Yeah. So this category, which I didn't neglect to mention in the beginning, is likes and dislikes. Just obviously they'll sort of theme together here. So we know what your absolute favorite food is. What is the one food you'll never eat? I think that would be pudding. Pudding. <sighs> yeah. And that's a casualty of braces? Yep. Yeah. Um, honestly, I didn't like pudding to begin with, and braces just caused me to dislike it even more to the point where people just eating it would make me queasy. Mm, that's not good. So definitely not going to be eating that anytime soon. Nope. Uh, well, before I ask this next question, let me ask a, a qualifying question. Do you like to read? Somewhat. Okay. I mean, I normally don't read, like, novels. I mean, there are novels that I would probably like, but would I ever really try to find them? No. I normally read the books that... and The only novels that I really read are books that I'm kind of forced to read by school. Um, but the books I normally would read and enjoy to read that I'm not forced to read are comic books and graphic novels. You know, I don't actually, like, read novels like I'm supposed to. Okay, so is there a favorite book? Um, uh, not really. I mean, I do like a lot of the novels that, um, I've actually chosen to read, um... But I haven't read them in a while. Um, but there is one book that I do like, and it was actually a Minecraft novel. Um, it was, I think it was called The Crash. It was a really interesting book. I actually had two different Minecraft novels. One was The Island, the other one was The Crash. The Crash is the more recent one. The Island I actually read, um, a couple years ago in, um, 
in uh, summer camp, and it was a good book. I liked it, um, and I definitely think The Crash was um, a really good book. I'd gotten it a while ago, but I had actually read it like last month. It, that was the first time I actually fully sat down and read it, and I really enjoyed it. Okay, good answer. So, this next one's kind of a, a funny one here because we know we know you're not a big sports fan. However, if there is a sport out there that you would want to play, what would that sport be? Mm, either volleyball or hockey. Okay. I've always enjoyed um, hockey for some reason because um, unlike soccer where it's a much huger it's a really huge ball, and I've gotten a lot of uh, moments where it was kicked in my face. Yes, literally. that would turn people off, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that completely turned me off from soccer. Most of the sports get turned off because I get hit with whatever we are using. Um, but with hockey, for some reason, I enjoyed it because I felt like I was actually good at hockey. And although, you know, you got the sticks and you whack people in the knees, that sometimes hurts. But for some reason... That's actually against the rules, by the way. Yeah, but like, in elementary school, uh, a lot of kids go for the puck. That's all you need to know. Um, But, you know, I actually did enjoy it, and it wasn't one of the sports that got me turned off. Um, Volleyball, I'm not necessarily good at it, but I enjoyed it when I was doing it in seventh grade. And one of my most fond moments um, ever doing PE was when um, it was almost, we were almost about to switch classes and go change. Um, but I ended up hitting the volleyball and it was on the net and it was like, oh no, is it going to go on our side or their side? And it immediately went to their side. Like it just, like the net was here, the ball was here and it just like slid down. And, um, we had actually had an eighth. Um, we were playing against, um, another, we, well, our teams were a mix of seventh graders and eighth graders. And one of the more competitive eighth graders was trying to get it and didn't. So I had scored a point um, nice. just before the game ended. That was my most glorious moment. Very nice. So you listen to music a lot lately, I've noticed. When we're in the car, when you're even at home in your room. What's your favorite song, band, or type of music? That's the thing. I don't really listen to a specific um, artist or band, and I don't listen to a specific type of music. I just listen to music that I think sounds cool. I'm not very picky on what type of music I'm listening to, what type of music someone else made. It's just I listen to music I think sounds cool. What was the last music that you listened to on your own? Um, it was, um, a short segment of a song, but, like, I was picturing a scene. I don't remember what the title was, but it was sort of, like, something like I'll Never Forget You. It was sort of one of those, um, songs, but it was also in more of a pop kind of thing. I, like, I don't, half the time I don't even know what title of the song I'm listening to. I just listen to the song. Yeah, yeah, I got the same problem. I just, there's certain types of music I like, but... I never bother to learn the artist or the title of the song or something like that. It just comes on the radio when I like it. Except Hotel California. Well, yes, except the Eagles and Hotel California and anything Eagles. So the next question that we have is, what is your biggest pet peeve? Ooh, thing that annoys me the most. Yes, that's a long list of things. I know, pick the top. <laughs> um... I guess I'd just say when people my age don't know how to stay silent. That's one of my, the most annoying things that I could think of. The sound of silence. Honestly, like, like I, I almost believe that most people my age can't stay silent for five minutes. Like, I could, uh, uh, I could definitely do it, and I know other kids could. But it seems like a lot of people my age can't be silent. And I don't know if they're like that everywhere else or just in my school, but it would always bother me. And it was one of the biggest things that would annoy me. That's interesting. And I think we'll wind up coming back to that one. Okay. So the next question is a theoretical question. Okay. 
If you were to have an ice cream sundae with any toppings you wanted, what would you choose? Okay, I have a lot. So I would mainly have peanut butter cups, Reese's Pieces, peanut butter sauce, and anything else that was peanut butter related. Yet when we ask you what your absolute favorite food was, you never mentioned peanut butter. Nope. Go it's, figure. <laughs> it's more of a ice, like ice cream... Like, okay, think of it this way. Like, you like bacon, and you say everything is better with bacon. Except Yoda stick. <laughs> Except Yoda stick, yes. So, it was sort of the I. So, take that idea. Like, you'd put bacon on anything. For me, peanut butter was kind of like, I wouldn't exactly put it on everything, but ice cream was one of the main things that um, made peanut butter... That made my peanut butter addiction really come alive. I could see that. It's, it's very good with peanut, with uh, ice cream. Yep. Uh, let's see. Next question we have is, what is your least favorite chore? Uh, cl- taking the trash out from the bathroom. That, mm, no, no. Okay. I don't like that. The, like, your trash is normally just food, and I can deal with that. But the bathroom is more... I mean, that's well, what, what is you, it? Nobody goes in the trash can in the bathroom. What's I wrong know, with it? but it's like, I mean, it's where you clean yourself and you have a no, lot. No, I clean myself in the shower. <sighs> look, look, for me and mommy, that's where like, that's I where our it. main hygiene thing is. I totally get and it. I don't want to get into what's in the trash can. I need it's not just, say anymore. No, yeah. I get it. Yes. So let's talk seasons. We're right in the middle of a season change from from summer to fall here. What is your uh, least favorite season? Summer, definitely. Summer. And I don't. I don't li- well, now let me give you the reasons. One of the main things is that I don't like the heat. I prefer. A nice cold breeze, and this the sun just seems to really not like me. Um, there, I'm with you there. There's also the insects. I hate them. I don't. I mean, I understand that a lot of them are trying to help our ecosystem and all that stuff, but I don't like it. And like, I freak out whenever I feel something like like a hair move on my skin. It feels like there's a bug near me. The creepy crawlies. Yeah, I don't like that. Um, and just, those were the main things that I didn't like about summer. I could probably think of other reasons, um, but not off the top of my head right now. I think that's sufficient. Thank you. So the next group of questions at the small group, and it's about family and friends. We just have a few with this one. So describe your parents in three words or less. Okay, I'll start with you. Of course you will. (laughs) Just to be safe. Okay. I lost my cameras. Oh, there we go. That's interesting. Okay. Technical difficulties here. Sorry let's, about this, people. Hang on. Let's see if we can get them back. There we go. Okay. No, switch to the camera. There we go. Okay. Okay. Um. So. After that, um, to describe you in three words, um, smart, um, you're definitely smart. Okay. Um, hmm. Mm. Wow, I didn't think it'd be this hard. (laughs) I'm trying to think of ways to put this. Uh, funny. Okay. Sometimes. I mean, you do crack good jokes. Sometimes. Just, just. <laughs> I also uh, crack bad jokes, too, apparently. Yeah. Um, and one last word. Uh, helpful. I'd helpful. say you're helpful as well. So I'm smart, funny, and helpful. Yeah. Okay, I'll buy that. How about mommy? Um, okay. I'll go with hardworking. That's okay. still one word, right? Sure. We'll, we'll, we'll put it together. Okay, so hardworking. I'd say tolerant because she has to deal with a lot of our stuff. Yeah, she does put up with us, doesn't she? Yep. So I'd say she's tolerant. Um, 
And one more. Outgoing. Uh, yes, that would definitely describe Mommy. Yep. She's so Mommy is hardworking, tolerant, and outgoing, and I am smart, funny, and helpful. Well, it's good to know we all have some practical skills. Yep. So the next question is, would you choose a different name for yourself if you could? Um, not really. I'm pretty okay with my name right now. Um, there are really nice names out there, but I think I'll stick with my name. Okay. And what makes a good friend to you? Um, someone who makes a good friend is someone who is willing to listen to you whenever you need them. Someone who is willing to tell you when they need you, because honesty is very, I think honesty is very important for friendship. I also want some. I also think a good friend would also be caring, wanting to help you whenever you needed it, and not just willing to listen, but also help you out with something difficult um, or something that you're struggling with. Okay, sounds good. So that was all we had for the friends and family. The last segment, uh, the last set of questions that we'll talk about in uh, this group is school and learning. And I only have a few here as well. Okay. So what do you enjoy learning about school? About in school? Yes. Um, can I go off of different subjects? Well, just give me the one that you like the most. Um, I'd say... I like learning physics. Physics. Okay, I'll buy that. Yep. Physics is fun. Who is your favorite teacher of all time? Mr. T. A bit of a fool. <laughs> Mr. Trombetta. He's definitely one of my favorite. He's definitely my favorite teacher. Well, um, he gets a lot of plugs on this podcast. He's going to have to sponsor us or something. Maybe. <laughs> uh, okay, next question is... What would you like to learn in school that you aren't already learning? Um, I'd say more about, more about ways on how you can, um, turn out. Like, um, more ways on how you could, um... Like, career-type things? I mean, yeah. I'd think of, like, different career paths you can take. Something like that. Okay. Um. All right. That works. Um. And actually, this last question is a duplicate. I already asked this about your bo your favorite book, so we don't have to go that way. So that was all I had for that group of questions. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll come back, and we'll talk about our next group of questions. Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Our husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. We'll look at the interesting and obscure entertainment news of the week. We'll talk about theme park and pop culture news. We'll give you the latest and greatest on pop culture conventions. We'll give you a deep dive into Disney, Star Wars, and much more. Check out our video episodes at youtube.com backslash insights into things. Our audio episodes at podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com or check us out on the web at insightsintothings.com. Welcome back to the show. We are getting to know Maddie again. We have a series of questions about goals and aspirations we're going to ask you now. Alrighty. So what are some of your short-term goals next 12 to 18 months? Um, 
Well, um, for one thing, I want to make sure that you guys are comfortable with all the situations and that we all can adjust to the new, um, the new situations that we're going to experience in the next few months. I'm also hoping to finish school with some good marks this year and hope and get through, um, a full year of remote learning. So that'd be nice. Um, and I think that's it that I can think of right now. Okay. I think they're very good goals. So if you could have any career, what would it be? Um, so I'd want it more centered around more of my interests, like art, science, and um, a little bit of math as well. So I'd say, I mean, I've gotten a lot of options. Like, I'd like to be um, maybe an architect at some point. Um, I also want to be involved with a little bit of technology. And I think, like, writing and doing art could be something I do in my spare time. So what would your ultimate dream job be? Mm. If you could pick it today, anything you wanted to do, what would you do? I don't know what else. I don't know what major things can um, include art, technology, science, and math all in one. So I think architect, maybe even like a fashion designer because I've gotten um because i've gotten used to i've gotten into drawing outfits for my characters um and choosing outfits for my characters so i might even do that at some point okay a lot of things open okay good answers so you're a very talented individual already um from an artwork standpoint for sure but from an academic standpoint as well but what skill is there out there that you'd like to master that you don't have that skill at the moment? Theater. Theater. What do you mean by theater? Theater, like being able to um, perform a play or do a show or really? even do a bit of movie directing. Like, um, Well, the def- movie directing I totally get. So uh, that I get. But the theater stuff, do you want to perform on stage or do you want to be... Do you want to write plays, direct plays, produce plays, or do you want to be in the play? I mean, a little bit of both. Um, I was thinking when um, seventh grade started and I heard about Drama Club, I kind of wanted to join it, but I never really thought... But the fact that I kind of have a little bit of stage fright is a little bit concerning for the theater business, but it would be nice to um, try and perform in front of people to get over my stage fright um just speaking to your stage fright as of today this podcast has 9,233 views just saying also i want to tell you that i don't actually see all the people in front of me i'm not talking in front of a lot of people i'm just in our studio in our house talking towards you this does not this like, I mean on stage with hundreds or thousands of people staring directly at you. It's okay. all a matter of perception. If you don't perceive the audience out there, then the audience isn't there and it's just you and whoever's on stage with you. So, but that's cool. I think you should go for that. I think you'd get a kick out of it. If nothing else, the new experience will be a good learning experience for you. Yep. Where would you love to live if you had a choice of anywhere in the world? Uh, mm, maybe I'd go to, um, maybe I'd, like, travel overseas to possibly Europe or Asia. I'm, um, good bands, by the way. Hmm? Both good bands. Mm. So, I might, um, travel overseas to live somewhere in there. It would be kind of cool to live in, um... London, um, or Paris. Yeah. Um, I just would kind of like to maybe travel overseas, not like necessarily live there forever. I'm kind of okay with the situation I'm living in now, although it would be nice to, uh, go somewhere else right now. 
Yeah, it'd be nice to go anywhere else right now. Yeah. These are very strange times. Um, where do you see yourself in 10 years? So 10 years, you'll be 23, 24. You'll probably have graduated college. Where do you see yourself after graduating college? Well, I'd see myself either um, staying with you guys or visiting you guys. Um, I don't know what kind of house I'd live in, if I'd live in an apartment, if I'd live in a small house. Um, but definitely I'd probably be having a couple cats around the house as well. Because, Crazy cat lady. Yeah. Um, I don't think I would have been, um, I don't know exactly what kind of job I would have, but I'd want to have at least some job by the time I'm 20. Well, especially if you're living in an apartment, because you got to pay for that somehow. Yeah. Um. Okay. So, That's yeah. Good answer. Good answer. Is there anything that you want to be able to do that you can't do right now? Probably. You know, I gave you these questions in advance. You could have written I'm the sorry. answers down. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I just don't really know. Like, right now, I'm okay with things, but... See, like, the first thing most people your age would say to a question like that is, I want to drive. Is that even something that interests you? I mean, I'd want to drive. I'd want to get my license so that I didn't have to always travel by bus or bike or any other means of travel. So I'd definitely probably go for um, wanting to drive. Anything else that... Um, for my age that I can't do right now would probably consist of, I wouldn't visit a bar. That's just one of the things I want to get out well, right there right that's now. Good I wouldn't know. do that. I'm, I don't want to do that. Um, pretty sure I don't want to get married or anything. I'm fine with where I am right now. I'd want to at least try and have a child um probably just adopt a child right. to raise a child just um uh, you know do something for a kid well, let's get you changing litter boxes first you know if you can keep the cats <laughs> yeah. alive that's a good first step <laughs> yeah so the last question i have for our goals and aspirations is if you started your own business what would your business do um I'd say my business would be about expressing yourself, creating whatever art you want. It You could paint, you could do digital art, you could do writing, um, you could do music. It would be kind of one of those shops. It would be more of a, commu- a community store where um, younger kids could f- um, see if they want to get into any type of art. I'd want to do something like that at least. All right. I like that answer. That answer works. So the next group of questions we have, I, it's kind of a potpourri. It's, I labeled it habits, hobbies, and quirks. 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 Little, little idiosyncrasies you might have. So the first question is, are you a night owl or an early bird? Night owl. Hi. <laughs> I know. I mean, I'm kind of supposed to be technically both because of my schedule, but I prefer to be a night owl. Um, I'm with you there on the same way. I don't like waking up early at all. So, yeah. So, okay. Do you have any unknown talents that not many people know about? I like singing. You like Okay. Are you talented at it? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I mean, um, you guys sometimes compliment me when I sing. I don't sing a lot. Um, okay. But, but you don't do choir or anything like that in school? Nope. Would you? I mean, mm, I don't know. And choir is not this so bad because you're singing with a group. You're not doing unless you're a soloist. But yeah. that's usually by choice. Yeah, not many people know that I like to sing. I don't know if I actually sound good or not. Um, you guys have to be the judge of that. So. And, and you know, Mommy and Daddy don't judge you very harshly, so no. we, we think you sing fine. Yep. Of course, the only sample we really have is, you know, uh, the lion sleeps tonight at, at the <laughs> dinner table and rock band, so. Yep. 
Uh, what's our next question? What activity in life lights you up the most? Um, okay, I have a lot. So what, The most. The, the number one most. Not a list, the most. We only have an hour to do the show. <laughs> okay. Um, I'd say now doing, um, I'd say doing digital art right now. I really like and enjoy it. Um, and I really think it's fun and it's very relaxing and I definitely get a, um, a joy of satisfaction from it. Excellent. And I think you're very good at it too. And that's not me being overly generous. You actually are very talented. Thanks. Uh, let's see. What type of rides do you typically go on at amusement or theme park? Well, I definitely know I go on more rides than you or mommy would. That's true. So, I like doing dark rides. Dark rides are cool, um, and it's a nice way to lay back and just enjoy the scenery. But I also do thrill rides, such as small roller coasters. I don't really do the really huge roller coasters where you do, like, 360 loops, um, I just do, like, the fast speed roller coasters that you or mommy really wouldn't do. Right. Um, so, I do those kinds of thrill rides. I don't know what other kinds of amusement park rides there are, though. Okay, well, I think that's a good answer. Yes, people my size, gravity does, gravity and inertia are not very friendly to you on high speed rides. Nope. So what are some hobbies that you recently got into? You mentioned digital art. What else have you gotten into recently? The Sims. The Sims, yes. yes. I really enjoy The Sims, and it's a good way for me to not only create characters, but also give them a story, have them have different relationships. Um, so I really enjoy that. I also am getting into the process of movie making and editing. Um thinking about making a new series that I've said before that I'm not going to put too much detail into because we might even post it at some point. So yeah. Yeah. That should be interesting. So I, I guess I don't need to ask the next question, what keeps you busy on the weekends? I think we just covered that. Uh, so do you have any bad habits that you want to reveal? Uh, bad habits... Um, I can be overly emotional at times, and whenever I feel really strongly about something, I will let it be known. Okay. Um, like, I will make sure people know where where I stand, and how I feel on something, and how strongly I feel on it. So, sometimes that can be good, and but a lot of the times it's sometimes bad. So. Hey, you know what? There's nothing wrong with that. You're entitled to your opinion. And if the world doesn't like it, they don't have to listen. Yep. What is something nobody would guess about you? Ooh. Something nobody would guess about me. Yeah. The, the fact that you like to sing is one, but give me mm -hmm. another one. Okay. Hmm. Something no one would guess. Is there a hobby that you have, a skill that you have? a secret, you know, interest that you have? Um, sometimes when I, I'm home alone, I occasionally dance. Okay. No one would really guess that about me, and I'm pretty sure you didn't really know that about me. Nope. Nope. I did not. And now I put it out for the public, so now everyone's going to go on saying, Hey, I know what you, I know that you dance when you're home alone, so hey. So, despite the fact that you do a podcast weekly... Do people consider you talkative or quiet? Um, I'd say that I'm, I can be, like, I can be talkative when I want to be. I can monologue if I feel like it. But given the opportunity to talk to someone I really don't know, I'd always pick no. Okay. So I'm kind of in between. Um, I can sometimes be talkative when I want to be, but uh, I don't really do it to people I don't know very well. You do like the monologue, too. Yes. So the last question that I have in this group of questions is if you could go on a two-week vacation anywhere in the world, where would you go? Japan. 
Japan. So it's still Japan. Yep, it's still Japan. All I'm... right, two weeks in Japan. What are your top three things you want to see? I want to see Tokyo. I want to see Disneyland there and um, more about their uh, culture. Okay. I think that's a very well-balanced set of goals you have there. So we're going to take a quick break. We'll come right back and we'll get into personality traits. So this is where we get down to the nitty gritty of who you really are. So personality traits, we all have them. Some of them are stranger than others, but we'll see what we've got. So what are you very passionate about? Um, I'm very passionate about my art. That's kind of where, like, I get a bit more perfectionist, um, perfectionist kind of thing. Um, I really enjoy art, and I really want to make sure that my art looks good before I show anyone. And I'm really passionate about art, and I want to expand on my art as I go on. Okay, I think that's a very good answer, because you were very good at it. What are... The five things that can put a smile on your face. Okay. One is any of my cats sleeping. Um, that's very adorable, especially Leota, because she does the cute little put a paw over her face whenever she, like, moves. <laughs> she knows that I absolutely adore her, and she's like, you know what, fine, I'm going to show you how adorable I am. And uh, honestly, I really like that. So that's one. Um... I also put, I have a smile on my face whenever, like, we're eating and, um, the line sleeps tonight comes on and mommy's just like, really? Oh, oh wait, just an update here. I got an update from mommy. Leota's doing that now. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, whenever the line comes, um, the line sleeps tonight comes on, mommy's like in the middle of eating, we're all in the middle of eating and mommy's just like, just has that look. <laughs> Because we have to sing it. <laughs> yes, we have to sing it. <laughs> All right, that's two. What else? Um, whenever, um, whenever you crack a sometimes lame joke, for some reason, it still some it still puts a smile on my face that you're trying to make a funny joke. Although it's not, it's not the joke I'm smiling at. It's just you trying to be funny. Hey, you know what? Newsflash. A lot of times I crack jokes knowing they're not funny just to get a reaction. Yep. <laughs> okay, so that's three. Two more. Um, whenever Dorothy meows at me, she's been very affectionate lately, especially since we've been home, and she meows a lot, and just hearing her adorable meow, her like, hey, how you doing? Hi. Nice. That's just adorable. And the last one. Um, another one with uh, Dorothy. Whenever you're eating steak, and she like goes up on your knee and like, hi, hi, can I have some? Can I have some? That's great. Just adorable. The cat begging for food. Wonderful. Uh, what do you think are your greatest strengths? Um, I'd say, um. Imagination, 100%. I can be very imaginative and creative, and sometimes it can be a problem. Like, you can make a character, and you have no idea what their backstory is, but as soon as I stare at them, I'm like, okay, so here's their family life, here's their favorite blanks, and, yeah. like, I can make an entire story just looking at a character. Yeah, you sure can. Uh, what emotion would you say you experience the most? Um, I experience a lot of emotions. So, i just say, um, I mainly experience, like, a fine mood. Like, I'm not entirely angry, but I'm not overly happy. But I do have a smile on my face when I'm fine, so... I definitely say that being fine and um, having a small smile on my face is the emotion I'm in most of the time. Okay, that's good. That's, that's better than a lot of people's emotions these days. Do you have a hero, and why are they your hero? Um, I have a lot of people that I look up to, including you and Mommy and other people I know. Um, and I look up to them because they're responsible 
and they can take on challenges that seem nearly impossible to deal with. So I definitely look up to them for their problem solving, their caring attitude, and their intelligence. And that's a great segment into the next question of how do you overcome obstacles? Um, what I normally do is if I have gotten worked up, which probably happens, I need to take the time to calm myself down and then work the problem like we always say. Um, you always tell me to work the problem and first I'd identify the problem and then figure out a solution for it and I normally would um, come up with the solution for the problem and everything would be okay. Perfect. Um, when you're feeling uh, down, what makes you feel better? Um, hanging around with you guys or the cats. Although I am um, very much an introvert, um, I still like to hang around with my family and very close friends, and, um, normally you're trying to lighten my mood by cracking a few jokes and even poking a stick in my cage, and mommy's always there to listen if I ever need her, and she always gives very warm hugs as well as you, as, and so do you. Um, and the cats, they just... They just want to cuddle. They just tolerate you. <laughs> That's all you can ask for out of cats. Yeah. Uh, okay. Do you consider yourself a leader? Um, I definitely want to consider myself a leader because um, I try to work through problems that any of my friends or anyone younger than me are going through. And um, I want to try to find the best solution, but I also want to look at both sides of an argument. Like, one person says this, but the other person says that. Let's meet in the middle. So um, you're a mediator. Yep. Nice. So you had to describe Mommy and I in three words earlier. I want to ask you to describe yourself in three words. Okay. Um... Creative, I probably have that one down. Easily. It's been shown before. I'd say smart, um, because it's shown by my marks in school. And finally, um, I'd say caring, because I care very deeply about people who are close to me, such as you, the cats, and my very close friends, and the rest of our extended family. I care very much about everyone, and I want everyone to be happy. Nice. Nice. I like those qualities. So, at the risk of getting controversial for a minute here, let's talk political. If you were president for a day, what's the first thing you would either ban or allow? I'd make sure that anyone who was um, getting hated on, any type of person who was getting um, hate on by people who were um, against whatever they were for, I'd try to make them have the most equal rights that everyone else should because I feel like our differences shouldn't matter and I feel as though we should all deserve we all deserve rights and it shouldn't be a choice it should be it should be a right for them to have them okay very good answer and the last question that I have today is describe a time when you had to make a tough decision and are you happy with that decision um, so two of my friends had gotten into an argument once, and I was trying to help them reason it out, but it didn't seem to be working, and it was causing me to feel a little enraged, so I ended up ending the call we had and just trying to take a breather and um i don't necessarily regret it because one if i was completely enraged and still tried to help them i'd probably just lash out and um things wouldn't exactly um get fixed at all and two um they probably needed to stop talking to each other for a little bit okay again being the diplomat the mediator Interesting. 
Well, that was all we had. I'll, we'll come back in a second. We'll get your closing remarks and uh, we'll plug a few things. So go for your closing remarks. Okay, so we talked about a lot of different things, so I'm not necessarily sure how to put closing remarks, but um, I'm definitely saying that everyone try and stay positive through these tough times. Um, I definitely wanted to do... I'm sorry, there's so many cameras, thank you. So I just want to say for everyone to stay positive through these tough times, and um, uh, what was I going to say? Um, I wanted... We were going, we were planning on doing this podcast, not just to see the different answers I had, but in order to put something nice out in the world. We didn't want to go for like a really tough and hard to podcast this week. So we're just going with something nice, light and airy in order to bring some peace in this chaos that we call our world. All right. Very good. And I just want to chime in with my two cents here and say that. Doing episodes like this with you, I, I enjoy these because I get to know you more because th these aren't questions that normally come up during regular conversation. So as you're hearing these little things, I get to learn a little bit more about you. And I would encourage parents out there to take some of these questions and, and sit down with your kids and, and talk to them and find out what makes them tick and what makes them, what drives them, what's their passion, what makes them smile. Uh, you'd be surprised uh, how interesting some of the answers can be. And and sometimes you might hear things in there that, uh, you know, kind of tells you how to treat your child a little bit differently and what you have to do to make things a little bit better, a little bit easier for them. Or maybe they need help for something and they don't want to come out and ask for it. So you can kind of tease that out in little question and answer sessions like this. You don't have to record them and turn them into a podcast or anything, but discussions over a meal like that kind of uh, help to build that relationship. Anyway, before we go, I do want to invite folks to check us out. Uh, our long-form articles are available on Medium at medium.com slash insights into things. Again, please subscribe to our podcasts on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, and, and Amazon. Our podcasts publish uh, Monday mornings at 8 o'clock. You can catch the video versions if you look for insights into things.com. You can catch the audio versions if you look for insights into teens. Uh, you can email us at comments at insights into things. Hit us on Twitter at insights underscore things and all the wonderful things that we said earlier. So I think that's it for today. Mm. Oh, oh, wait, I'm sorry. And you. Um, and don't forget to check out our other two podcasts, Insights into Entertainment, hosted by you and Mommy, and Insights into Tomorrow, our monthly podcast, hosted by you and my brother, Sam. Very good. And we'll, we'll, we will be recording Insights into Tomorrow this weekend, so we should have one out on Monday. So that's it for today. Another one in the books. Bye, everyone. Bye. <laughs>